they have used this keyboard for many other activities apart from just writing in a computer I don't know if you can see it's very very dirty super dirty it was sold to me for 25 euros including delivery and there are keys that were falling and stuff like that I mean I can just remove number three for example you will see what's the condition of whatever is below the H is another one uh, I think the K is another one no, this one is a bit stuck. Anyway, there you go. Um, the FN is another one. I have removed them. I just, just want you to see that this keyboard was used, I think, at the beach, <laughs> in a garden, for as a boomerang for playing football, tennis, volleyball and if I just take this out it is, you will see in the pictures I'm, I'm putting next to this it is also bent you can see it here it's a proper project um, it's also charging and it's working perfectly the only thing is that it needs some maintenance and that's the part we are gonna be working today all right, I've checked if all the keys work. Initially, with the keys on, number two was not giving any signal, now it does. However, L, two dots, comma, or apostrophe, uh, the integration symbol, this fault, they don't work at all. But I think it's basically because, let me see if I can just show you how dirty it's all. How do I remove these keys? I have ordered in AliExpress these tweezers a long time ago. They're very nice. Stainless steel ESD. Link in the description. General purpose. Very nice. That's one of the tweezers I'm going to use, and the other ones, these ones, very spiky ones. How do we proceed? Well, with this mechanism. Careful because they are different layouts. For example, you can see at the top here how. In this number two, you have two tabs here. Two tabs here, two big ones, two small ones. However, at the bottom, it's just the opposite configuration. All right, just keep that in mind. I still don't know what to do with the space bar and the big keys because I've never done this, but for small ones, I start by placing this tool. You see it's, it's on the edge, it's very, 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 well, the kind of sharpen is like a knife. So I go to the key. I try to find for a gap. Like this, like I have defined right now. Now you need to pry a little bit from the bottom. And you feel the butterfly mechanism and then you twist it a little bit. One and two. Now it should be easier. That's it. One, two, and then, and then you slide, and that's it. Okay, I'm gonna repeat the process with N. So we insert the tweezers. Let's call it this way. Let's try to find for the gap. Now I found it. Now I need to pry a little bit, just on top of the butterfly mechanism. One, two. You see, and now slide. Forward, and that's it. Now, how do I get the mechanism? Here, I take these two sides are the ones you need to pry a little bit on. So, I just press right next to, you see a little gap here, I just press a little bit downwards and try to remove it from this resting position. There you go, there is a little hook. You can see this part here. And then I'm gonna do the same on the other side. And it should come out. Ta-da, that's one. I'm gonna repeat the same process with this one. It's one side. One, two. That's all. Now, in order to keep a certain order, I'm going to take B, for example, 
and I'm gonna place them again but this time upside down of course in the key just for to keep some everything tidy you know small cylindrical features you can see here now what we will do is we put it from the so from the rear side Boop. that's it it's already it already engaged with the hooks and now you need to hear a lovely sound that's it let's be let's do another one big hooks on the rear then There are features, one of, of the sides of this uh, butterfly mechanism is flat, the other one has like a little U-shape. Take the U-shape facing upwards. And now we take this one here, we take the small cylindrical features on the rear, we just put it against the hooks, like this. Oops, like this. And now you press, that's it. In this case, we're having the same situation as in this key, but instead of one, we have two small butterfly mechanisms. You, first, you need to separate these round wires from the, from the top and the bottom, and then you can pry a little bit from the bottom part of the key, and then you slide it and it comes out. Now you can see here how I did this one here, and where the, the wires go, the frame, how we call it. Uh, now for this one it's a bit more complex because there is no surface here at the bottom to pry a little bit so it comes out so what i'm doing because whenever you do it you see the butterfly it's 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 a mobile part so what i'm doing is from the top i do it from the top a little bit and then i try to lift it from here and it comes out so let's do it properly one and two one side is out now let's do it again from this side one and two that's it no effort whatsoever if you feel any resistance please just stop stop because you're doing something wrong you may break this that's it we got our shift key Same story with the space bar as you can see here. It's uh, same story, same distribution as for the shift key. However, for the enter key, uh, it's a slightly different. You can see how there is only one wireframe here, and it goes to go. It needs to go from the side, so this will go right here, and then the. This mechanism, instead of being oriented towards, let's say, uh, vertically, is now horizontally orientated. But the size behind is the same. Uh, I will just, for the small one, pry from the top a little bit, like this. Insert my spatula from below. There you go, almost there, out. And then this one we do exactly the same. One is out, we can do it this way. One is out, then the other one. And do this. Let's try this one first. Hmm. This one is a bit egg perfect okay out let's assemble all of this we don't lose any parts one then this one the other way around Hmm. Hmm. You see, I almost made a mistake. Like this. When you feel when you feel a bit of resistance, just stop. Now it's good. Now this one. This one here. 
needs to go this way. That's it. It is pretty dirty. So before I proceed and I remove the back cover of this keyboard, I think I'm gonna use this brush very gently with the hoover so I can remove the majority of the dirt and I will be very very careful with these little springs. You can see already the difference between this one and this one and yes I ended up using my personal toothbrush. I think is the best option. I think I will clean it later properly and I can still uh, keep using it but it's multi-purpose. Very nice. You can see already the difference even though I'm just let's say shaking or agitating the dirt before I hover a little bit. This is kind of like before and you can see after. Who's that hovering time? <laughs> Once I disassemble everything I will go for let's say a more invasive cleaning method. Well as you can see in that corner the back cover has been glued. Now we need to apply a little bit of heat, I would say, and remove the glue. What glue am I going to use to put everything back? I have no freaking clue. So I will, I will try to figure out something and we will see along the way. I got it. Horrible. A lot of adhesive. But the good thing is that it just, just strips. A good double-sided tape should do the job later. Now I'm going to remove the battery the PCB and just tear down this thing because it's really disgusting. The way I disassembled this back cover was applying heat first and then using this kind of spatula you can see the tip is super dirty and sticky. Patience. And in order to remove this part from this one I had to use an old David credit or whatever card. I have been cleaning this guy and you can see the difference how the keys are like how the keys are here you see all full of nice dirt and here how they look nice but as you can see there are some of these rubber nipples have been removed especially the ones corresponding to the keys that don't really work and I found out I don't know if you see it here that it looks like the circuit is either burned or rusty and it happens here, here and here. I am not really sure and I'm a bit... I don't know. I need to check and diagnose if now after I have cleaned everything it, these keys work then I will continue cleaning the rest otherwise I need to find a solution. So now I'm going to assemble all the battery and the PCB and try to test this out. If it works, all good, but I don't expect a long life for these keys. If it doesn't work, my only idea would be to expose all the connection. I'm assuming it's, it's made of some kind of copper and or take a little bit of wire and solder it from here to here following the circuits is going to be a high precision uh, surgery and for 25 euros I already tell you this is not worth it and I think I paid too much okay I just installed reinstalled the basic electronics I know I'm missing the uh, lighting port but at least the switch is here electronics here and all the keyboard is connected to the PCB now I'm gonna try to reconnect to the computer and test if the um, faulty keys are working and I can ignore that issue and also you can see clean film here so I can just remove this easily after that. Bad news, this key which is supposed to be L doesn't work. This one also doesn't work, it's the common dot. And this one which is apostrophe, now it works. This one which is uh, interrogation symbol doesn't work either. So these three keys are the ones we need to fix. Also number two didn't used to work. Now it works perfectly. Number two, 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 one, sorry. 
and now two. And that's my girlfriend. It's been a few days. I have finished cleaning all the inside of the keys, the pockets itself. I have lost a lot of rubber nipples in the meantime, here, here, and here, here. And I must say a few things. You see here these marks, this one, this one, this one. This is because of water or liquid. They also appear here, here, and here. I have did a little bit of research. I I watched the guy doing some tear down, not of this keyboard, but the one with the numeric keyboard on the side. And yeah, same issue. He had the same issue. I mean, well, like a black. These lanes here are all blackish. They are rusty or oxidized, I would say. And yeah, the conclusion was that the, 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 the keyboard was not functional. I'm leaving you the link just below in the description. And basically, uh, he said, uh, well, it's good as a teardown, but it's not worth to fix it. Well, that is true, because you have a lot of little spot wells everywhere. And if you really, really want to see what's beneath this layer, I think there are three layers in total, you need to remove all of them. But I'm very pissed off because I paid 25 euros for this and after the testing, these keys here don't work. Which makes sense. This guy in YouTube also said the same. Three, four keys don't work, don't even bother to buy it. So, just because I'm very um, upset, I'm going to try to fix this. How? I'm going to drill holes with my vertical driller everywhere. Although I must say, this part, it's already, you see? It's not properly welded. So I'm gonna drill holes, and it's gonna take a lot of time. I don't really have to drill a lot, and I will try to remove this layer, see what's below, and I will try to fix, to redo these lanes here with a conductive marker. I don't know what's waiting for me, but I think I'm gonna try and do my best to finish this. But, a warning, if you want to buy a keyboard, and even if it's if it's a gift, you wanna go through this task, okay, be my guest, but it's not worth it. There is a high chance this won't work after all the work I'm gonna do now. First, we need to remove that little piece of plastic. I have chosen two millimeters because this will help me to center uh, the drill bit just in these holes. I did the first test, well, two holes I tested. I think I need to choose a bigger diameter. This one, the second one, it's a bit, uh, it's out already, but the first one it is not. So I assume I will need to use a slightly bigger diameter. So. It will come out. All right, this process looks somehow promising. Look at this, and it's been five minutes. So, few observations: if you do this in these corners, you can drill vertically, or you can tilt it, put it at an angle, and drill. I don't know if you see this here, but yeah, I messed up. I think there are four lanes, completely open loop. I will need to fix this. Let's see. This this becomes even more impossible. Anyway, second one. This here. This nice curly thingy. I think that's welding. In this place, it didn't work, and in this corner, it didn't work either. This corner I could lift. This one is very well welded, and this part is very well welded. I will give it a go, but drilling all these holes didn't take me more than 10 minutes. It's not that strong. You just need to press a little bit, you see? And it comes out. I really thought 
this part will stay in the keyboard. Now this is even worse. I have to separate these two or three layers. And oof, looks like um, a lot of work. It's not that bad. Look, you can just lift it from one side and the first layer is out. It's not the first layer, it's both layers. I think there are two layers. And you can see that this keyboard, yeah, suffered a lot. Don't be scammed. And then the first layer itself, you can already peel it from here. You, you can see how the black marks are almost everywhere. But this one has two parts too. And that's going to be the tough job as far as I can see. You can see here these lines, this point here, this point here here all of these yeah I really doubt I might I will manage to fix this and plus the connector ha <laughs> I can start peeling from here these tracks are almost gone there's nothing and if I do a continuity test I mean I put a lid here and a lid here it should beep nothing happens we have the same right here and in other locations like here too. So what's going to be the solution? Well, I'm gonna try with this guy. It's a conductive ink pen from Circuit Scribe. If you are in the USA, you're lucky because they are very cheap there. Here they're freaking expensive. The idea is to remove all the corroded parts and try to redo the path again and as a check as a sanity check I will check again conductivity but it looks okay it looks time consuming I must say but on the other side it's not that hard so I think I'm gonna give it a go and this ink here it sticks very well to rough surfaces of course but not in, in uh, shiny surfaces for example plastic like this I tested it yesterday, like against this lead, uh, I will never stick. However, in surfaces like the coating from these um, tweezers, yeah, it should, should do it pretty well. And when it dries, it's actually cool. I tried to rub it many times, nothing happened. So I think here everything will work properly. And a uh, good thing is that another layer will be on top of this one. So if it just goes away, if it disappears, well, it's going to be really hard. As an example, there should be a lane going from here to here, okay? I'm going to cover it now and wait a little bit and do like a conductivity test. I am new to this and it works! Um, I applied, and you can see this line here, it was completely missing, now it's not. What you need to take into account is that once you apply it, you need to let it cure. And once it settles, I think five minutes, what I did in order to make it work was to play a little bit of heat with the heat gun, but still, you can see, for example, this line here, I'm gonna take this point and this point. You can hear it, it's perfect, okay? There's another little bit here, and I think it's here and here, at this point here, let's put it here. You see? It works very well, but when I take this line here, with the red one, to this point, it doesn't really work. Why? Well, I think here there is a little bit of resin or something and I need to redo it again. That happens also with many, many of the connections. So that's why I encourage you to, every time you fill one lane, try to do a full checkout. I have finished this one. Uh, what I basically did uh, was, well, the process I followed was to, you see these paths here, this should be in contact with the other layer. And it's also a connection for all these little parts around um, the whole keyboard. It's basically where, where the, the, the keys are. So what I did was to the multimeter just, uh, just go for continuity test. In the meantime, you can see how I had to rebuild some of these tracks. And also, you can see the difference in color. This is the new ink I, I, I placed. This is the old one. So it's in contact with oxygen, it gets um, oxidized. So it's very good now. 
uh, once I finish, you run a second test, okay, it's not very time consuming, and then you cover it with clean film. And you move to the second one. This one is a nightmare. You can see why. First of all, what I'm going to do is, uh, as I showed, um, I need to uncover these tracks a little bit so I can do exact follow exactly the same process for that. Uh, since I broke the connector, I had to tape it right here with a little bit of insulating tape. Now I am going to do the. Um, I'm gonna try to map this connector to all these tracks so I know everything is working. Otherwise, it's a waste of time. And then, of course, you can see right here, I need to follow all of these little tracks and try to recreate everything again. Well, looks like a lot of fun. Hands on. Next step is to align the three layers of the keyboard together and especially these little these little pads we have here and on top. Uh, <clears throat> I had to develop this tool that you can see here and I 3D printed it in the shape of a jigsaw because I'm using ASA and the warping and the issues <clears throat> if if you don't have the material uh, at the certain humidity and also the temp damping temperature is not the correct one then uh, you have warping, you have uh, stringing, you have uh, the elephant food and you have all the kind of phenomena you can get in the 3D printing. Um, the only thing that saved me was to divide this part into many many parts like a jigsaw and also create big lumps I think it's called or big discs and all the edges so the parts will remain uh, glued let's call it to the um, heat bed. And the only problem is that they vertically if you're looking at all this part from the vertical point of view uh, they are slightly bent. And I just realized, so I was gluing it, I used a cyanoacrylate and as you can see here, and the gaps are huge, although it sh everything should be well aligned. And you could tell me, hey, you should have sanded it. Yes, but then the alignment of the pins would not have been correct, or maybe they would have been correct. I ended up <coughs> as uh, printing this model with all the pins, with all the... Uh, because I wanted to determine which pins are the right ones in order to have the correct alignment. As you can see, just having them in the middle, uh, it will allow you to have a cheaper tool, not so accurate, and also just to perform the job as good. Uh, and these two pins are the alignment pins. So in my case, I start removing all these pins, you can see them here. Uh, I think I managed to arrange, uh, I managed to re reach a certain conclusion. So. I'm gonna. I'm, I started doing it from the center because it's the most important part for me. Although here you have another connection, but uh, it looks like everything is flat right now. And I will proceed putting the other layer and the other layer and the last layer on top. And probably with the heat gun, I will just apply a little bit of heat and try to press with my hand. Um, that's another reason why I want to remove as many pins as I can because my hand. I can use my hand to make some pressure. Otherwise, I need to design another tool that will go here. Let's, let's call it the, the cavity, because it will be the counterpart of this tool, so I can press everything and... So this is somehow like wrapping a book. You just position it from the middle, and then you just let it reach the ends. So the tolerances will be, let's say, absorbed at the ends, and all the pins will align perfectly with the parts we are looking for. I'm gonna place this one here, and then I will place the other one on top. Now that I have finished, it's just overlapped um, and it was pretty easy. Now the last part, which is uh, the last layer on top of, the, of this one, just um, it will basically be the, the, the real test. We will see if all these pads will align. You can see how well the pads are aligned. This is what I wanted to achieve. So I'm going to call it a success, although this tool needs a little bit of rework. So now before I apply a little bit of heat, I will proceed with a dry test. I would like to connect this connector and switch everything on to see if the keyboard actually works and especially it's part of the connector because I'm afraid it's not going to work properly. For now this keyboard is upside down as you can see here so it will be equal to have it this way. You can see the direction keys here you see up and down here where my, where my um, finger is. <laughs> 